how to track your ovulation. We have talked about using ovulation tracker apps. We have also talked about using ovulation test kits and test strips uh, to track your ovulation on this channel. But one thing we haven't talked about is a BBT, a basal body thermometer. This is one of the easiest and cheapest way to track your ovulation and conceive if you are trying to conceive. This device is so cheap, so affordable, any woman can get it. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. If you are new to my channel, you're very welcome. My name is Nosa. Thank you for joining us today. So in this video, I am going to be unloading a lot of TMIs. This is one of the things that helped me when I was trying to conceive and I have talked about this so many times. So finally, today the video, the video is here and I hope you guys learn a lot. I hope you, I hope you find this video helpful. A BBT is a special kind of thermometer. It is able to measure your temperature to the 100th degrees. What I mean by that is if there is any tiny changes in your temperature, this thermometer can detect it. For example, if you use a regular thermometer to, to take your temperature, you can get numbers like 98.6. But when you use a BBT, you can get numbers like 98.63. And when we talk about your basal body temperature, we are simply referring to your lowest temperature. Basal, lowest and this thermometer is designed to measure those tiny little changes so that is why you need a bbt okay before i make this too complicated if you are not able to find this special bbt then you can use your regular thermometer get a regular thermometer and you can use it to achieve everything we'll be talking about in this video okay so now there are two main fertility signals to track your ovulation if your ovulation is approaching, there are two things you want to pay attention to. The first one is your cervical fluid, your cervical mucus. So during ovulation or when ovulation is approaching, you will notice that your cervical mucus goes through different stages from sticky to creamy to stretchy and then it goes to watery and then it disappears. And when you see all of that happens, then you know ovulation has occurred in your body. The other signal, the other main fertility signal is your temperature. Yes, your temperature can tell you if you are ovulating, if ovulation is approaching or if you have past ovulation. Okay, you guys, this is very important and I need you to pay attention. So the main job of a basal body thermometer is to confirm that ovulation has happened. So before ovulation happens, your temperature will be kind of low, okay, from your period. During your period, your temperature will be low and then right before ovulation happens, your temperature will go down. It will go even lower. And then after ovulation happens, your temperature goes up. I'm going to show you guys all the pictures because I took my temperature for like 15 days and I'm going to show you all of it in this video. Okay, here we go. Good morning, guys. So today I'm going to start taking a record of my basal body temperature. I'm going to be using the Primum app. And like I have mentioned, if you don't have the Primum or any ovulation tracker apps, you can simply just get yourself a book, get a book, get a pen and get yourself, of course, a, a basal body thermometer. And anything you see here, the numbers you see here is what you are going to be recording in your book. So I'm going to hit on this plus button and it's going to lead me to where I can log in all my data. So that's it right there. BBT, that's my basal body temperature. So I'm going to put the correct time. I usually wake up at 5 30 a.m every day so i'm going to put the correct time when i woke up today that was at 5 30 a.m and i took my temperature and this morning my temperature was 97.72 97.72 you guys this thing is just beginning to malfunction because of the battery i need to change the battery so this morning my temperature was 97.72 i wrote it down somewhere so i wrote it down in a book i wrote my temperature down this morning that was it right there 97.72 degrees fahrenheit that was that was the number i saw here when i woke up now this thermometer uh, is able to save the temperature it usually does that it will save the temperature to you the end of that day or till you take another one but because the battery is low it is just malfunctioning so i'm going to change the battery so this was my temperature this morning when i woke up uh, i'm going to be recording my temperature throughout this period uh, so like i said if you don't have those ovulation tracker apps you can just use a book so uh yeah and another thing i'm going to say is your first temperature for the day is usually the most accurate so you don't have to do this multiple times you don't have to take your temperature like three times in the morning when you wake up 
the first one is usually the most accurate that's from my experience and once you take your temperature you can get up you don't have to lie down there anymore you can get up and go about your day you can also you know use your phone to take a picture of the of your temperature and you know just save it in your phone then whenever you have the time you can go write it down in the book or put it in the app i'm going to show you guys all of this in the course of this video so this is day one today is monday i woke up at 5 30 and my temperature was 97.72 so i'm going to log this into the premium app the number was 97.72 i'm just going to hit done and that is it my basal body temperature this morning when i woke up so um yeah we're going to continue doing this tomorrow and continue until my ovulation day so that will be it for today. I will see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, guys. So today is the next day. And this morning, my temperature was reading 97, 97.78. 9778. So I'm just going to log it in here. BBT. BBT. So I took my temperature at the same time this morning. 5 30 a.m. this morning and my temperature was 9778 9778 so that's my temperature for day two all right i'll see you guys tomorrow patience okay now there are, there, there are strict rules to use a bbt if you want to get the most accurate results you have to stick to the rules of using a basal body thermometer the first one is the time of the day that you wake up you have to wake up at the same time every day or every morning if you're if your waking up time is five o'clock you have to wake up at five o'clock every day you can wake up like five minutes late five minutes earlier but it has to be around that time not one hour early or one hour late okay so you want to wake up at the same time every day number two when you wake up in the morning you can't get up from the bed you can't get up or sit up you can't roll, you can't turn around. You have to be in the same position. If you were lying down on this side, you have to be on that side. If you are lying on your tummy, you have to be on your tummy. You can't turn or roll over. So you want to put this under your pillow so that your hand is just right next to it. You have to be in the same position because any body changes movements that you, that you do can affect the accuracy of the results. Number three, you can't talk. You can't say hi to your partner. You can, if he's talking to you, you have to be mute. You have to be quiet. So at least let him know before then that I'm going to be doing something so I can't talk in the morning. Okay. Now, number four, this is probably the most important. You have to be lying down for at least three hours. You have to be lying down, sleeping for at least three hours. So if you usually get up at night to maybe go pee or maybe you have a baby, a toddler, or maybe you have any reason to get up, just time it make sure if you are going to wake up at six o'clock the last time you should get up from that bed should be at 3 a.m once it is past 3 a.m you, you can't get up anymore because it is going to affect the results now for me there were some times when i woke up like one hour before before my normal wake up time i had to stay there i had to stay there this is not something you're going to do every day it is just only during your fertile window when ovulation is approaching so you if, if you wake up like way earlier just stay there until it is time to do you know to do the test to test your temperature so if you want to get the most accurate results then it is important that you follow these rules if i were you i would write this down okay so that you don't forget and of course how do you use this you want to put this under your tongue put it under your tongue and wait for so if the instruction says to read the result after one minute then after one minute you can read the result if it's two minutes if it is three minutes for me, there's usually a sound. The, the, the thermometer would beep. When it makes that sound, beep, 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 that means my result is ready. So these are some things that, 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 you, that you really want to pay attention to because if you miss them, if you think they are not important, then you are going to, con you are going to keep having inaccurate results and you wouldn't know when you ovulated. Yeah, it would just be a waste of time. All right. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys some live images of my basal body temperature. I took my temperature for a couple of days and started from my period until my ovulation, even after my ovulation. I also use the Primum app to keep the record of my charting. But if you don't have the Primum app, if you're not able to download the app, then simply get yourself a book, a book and a pen. 
and you're gonna use this to write down your temperature from when you start to when you stop so every day I took my temperature I logged it into the app I also came here to write it let me bring this close you guys can see that so day one Monday my temperature was 97.72 97.72 degrees Fahrenheit the next day was Tuesday my temp oh on Tuesday I didn't take my temperature <laughs> I don't know what happened I can't remember what happened but there's nothing here so Tuesday nothing but that was still you know, during my period so it didn't matter that much now Wednesday I woke up again at 5 30 a.m. my temperature was 97.72 the same thing as Monday 97.72 Thursday woke up at 5 30 temperature 97.78 97.78 Friday which is day five now something happened on Friday I woke up 30 minutes earlier I woke up at 5 5 a.m. instead of 5 30 a.m. and I needed to come down I needed to go to the bathroom I couldn't stay there anymore so I just took my temperature 30 minutes earlier now look at the results the result is 97.94 97.94 you can see the result has changed you know just because of that that change in time so that is why you want to stick within the time that you usually wake up five minutes early or five minutes late is fine but but 30 minutes from when you usually wake up would definitely affect the accuracy of the result the next day saturday i woke up at 5 30 and the result is my temperature was 97.93 97.93 this is accurate because i woke up at the right time the next day was sunday i woke up at 5 30 and my, and my temperature was 97.84 97.84 degrees fahrenheit the next day was monday 5 30 a.m temperature 97.79 97.79 next day was tuesday woke up at 5 30 temperature was 97.59 97.59 the next day was Wednesday. My temperature was 97.52, even lower, 97.52. The next day was Thursday, and my temperature was 97.59, 97.59. Friday, 5.30 a.m., my temperature was 97.72, 97.72 degrees Fahrenheit. All the days leading up to Friday has been 97.5, 97.5. But on Friday, for the first time, I am getting a little rise. I'm getting my first rise in temperature. This is interesting, but let's keep going. Saturday, woke up at 5.30 a.m. My temperature, 97.87. 97.87, definitely going up. Sunday, I woke up at the same time, 5.30 a.m. And my temperature was... 98.56 we are no longer in the 97s 98.56 degrees fahrenheit this is definitely higher than what i've been having the next day was monday i just wanted to do one last one so i woke up at the same time and my temperature was 98.62 98.62 degrees fahrenheit that was definitely the highest uh, temperature record that i had gotten and at this point you guys can see that progesterone was definitely rising my temperature was rising ovulation was happening and yeah so this is the line of progression for a woman who is ovulating this is what you will see if you are if you are taking your temperature but there are some very interesting things that i want to point out to you now according to experts and science Ovulation happens when you experience the dip in your temperature, when your temperature goes down. So for every normal human being, if you are not sick, if you are not pregnant, if you are not drinking, taking alcohol, because these are some things that can affect your temperature. So if you are fine, your temperature should be around 98. It's 98 degrees Fahrenheit. If you are, if you are using Celsius, it should be around you know, 37 or 38 uh, degrees Celsius. Anything higher, or lower could mean that you are sick your temperature is just not right okay before your period starts you will notice a little drop in your temperature so as you guys can see from my images once my period started my temperature dropped to around like 97.72 97.82 97 point it was just in you know 97s 97s so if you are using celsius you're probably going to be seeing like 36 or 37 okay and right before i ovulated like from tuesday from Tuesday, before I ovulated, my temperature dropped even lower. According to science and experts, the point at which your temperature dropped, that day your temperature dropped, or the last day you had that low temperature before it starts rising, that is the point of your ovulation. The point where your temperature dropped 
and you know connecting it to when your temperature starts going up that is the point of your ovulation and that day for me would be thursday so between thursday and friday is when i ovulated because thursday the last that was the last day i had a low i had a dip my temperature on thursday was 97.59 by friday morning friday 5 30 a.m my temperature was already climbing up it was 97.72 so i am going to take Thursday or between Thursday and Friday as my ovulation. It could have been Thursday. It could have also been between Thursday and Friday, maybe a few hours in Friday. I hope I'm not getting you guys confused, okay? What I'm trying to say is science does not know exactly when a woman ovulates. That's exactly when your ovaries release an egg. No expert has been able to figure that out. But a lot of predictions can be made based on the symptoms that you're experiencing in your body, including your temperature. So according to my basal body temperature, Thursday would be the day that I ovulated. I know that once your egg is released, that egg is viable for 24 hours. So if my egg was released on Thursday, that means the whole of th Thursday, I could get pregnant. If my egg was released on Thursday night, that means between Thursday and Friday, I had you know, some, some, some egg in my body, some matured egg in my body waiting to be fertilized. So what you want to do is to maximize your chances. At that point when your temperature drops and the first time you get a rise, that is the point you should plan to do the deed and get pregnant if you are trying to conceive. And for those of you who are using a notebook, because I have everything here in my notebook, I wrote some things down. So Thursday was the last day I had a drop in my temperature and I wrote it down as my ovulation day. And then Friday, this is going to sound interesting. Friday was the day that the premium app considered as my ovulation day. The premium app considered Friday as my ovulation day, but I cannot rely on the app because I have this, which is more scientific. I can see the numbers here. I can see my temperature dropping and rising. So I am going to go with science. Okay. I should say this, the way your temperature goes back up, it's not, it's not like sharp. Okay. It doesn't just go from down all the way to, to the top. It is a gradual process. Okay. I'm also going to show you guys the charts. I'm going to explain the charts, you know, with this app. I'll explain that to you. When your temperature starts going up, that means progesterone is going up. It means you have already ovulated. Okay. Okay. Here is another very interesting thing that I experienced throughout this period. On Thursday, when I had the last dip in my temperature, there were no ovulation symptoms in my body. Not a single one. None. Nada. Niet. On Friday, the same thing. On Friday, the premium app said I was ovulating, but there, was, there were no ovulation signs in my body. Saturday, Saturday morning was the first time that I started experiencing ovulation signs in my body. On Saturday, I woke up with some headache. I, was, I had a lot of cravings. I just had this huge appetite. I also noticed some cramps on my, either my left or my right side. I noticed some cramps on my lower abdomen. And then the holy grail, the big one, was my cervical fluid. I noticed the changes in my cervical fluid. You know, I was producing the fertile type of cervical fluid. Now, I know that this may sound confusing to you because if you are monitoring your ovulation with uh, just your cervical fluid, you may think that the day you see that, uh, that you know, fertile type of cervical fluid, that is the day of your ovulation. That is why a BBT, a basal body thermometer, is the most accurate way or one of the most accurate way to pinpoint your ovulation. If I wasn't using the BBT, I would think that Saturday morning was my ovulation. But according to experts and science and the BBT method, the thermometer method, Thursday would be my ovulation day because that is the day I experienced the last dip in my temperature. What my body experienced was post-ovulation symptoms. I started experiencing ovulation symptoms after I had ovulated. This is very, very important for you women who are trying to conceive. There are a lot of times when we think we are ovulating, we are actually not. You may be experiencing ovulation signs in your body and thinking, oh, today is my ovulation day. But no, your ovulation day has, has probably passed. So if you can get yourself a BBT, which is very cheap, you can get it in any pharmacy, pharmaceutical store, chemist shop, close to you. If you can get it, monitor your temperature. The day you see that dip or the last day you see the dip in your temperature, that is the day, according to experts and science, that you are ovulating. So these are some live images of my, of my temperature for like 15 days. And like I said, if you don't have the premium app or any ovulation tracker apps, you can use a book. Now, if you can download any other ovulation tracker apps, that would work as well. 
they have places provided where you can put your base so body uh, temperature for the day so you can use any ovulation tracker apps that has that feature okay all right let us go to the chart something always happens when you ovulate or before you ovulate and after you ovulate something happens with the charts in this app so there are two lines there there's a straight line and then there's a kind of a wiggly line a line that's going up and down now that straight line is uh is the measurement for a for a normal temperature a normal temperature should be within 98 degrees fahrenheit okay so during my period as you guys can see the wiggly line, the line that's going up and down, is below the normal range of a temperature. That line is below, and that is because I am on my period, okay? Then, towards the end of my period, my temperature starts going up. That means the line starts going up. It goes up, and then it starts coming back down again. It starts coming back down again. That means my ovulation is approaching. My fertile days are approaching. And then, guess what happens? It starts climbing back up again. And at this point, I could say that I have ovulated. At this point, my egg has been released. Progesterone has taken over and my temperature starts climbing up again. So it's, it goes to 97.7 .7, and then the next day it goes to 97, 98 points, whatever. Now, another thing I, I should say, which is also very important to confirm that ovulation has happened, you need at least three sustained uh, high levels of, of, of your temperature. You need to see three high levels of your temperature to confirm that ovulation has happened. As you guys can see, I have three sustained uh, temperature rise. Three sustained temperature rise. There are three, like three uh, tiny cycles up there. Now, you need to have that for you to confirm that ovulation has happened. So if your temperature goes down and then goes up just one time, you cannot use that to confirm ovulation. You need at least three sustained temperature rise. You need to see those three tiny cycles up there if you are using this app for you to know that ovulation has happened. So if you don't see that, then continue. Continue doing the ritual. Continue waking up every day. So like I mentioned before, the two main fertility signals you want to pay attention to are your cervical mucus and your temperature. Once you see this, once you see the changes in your cervical mucus and a dip and a rise in your temperature, then you can confirm that ovulation has happened. So on my book here, for those of you who are using a notebook, I put an asterisk on the day that my temperature started climbing. I had three consecutive 97.5s, 97.59, 97.52, 97.59, and then on Friday I had 97.72. So during these times, during these 24 or 32 or 48 hours, you want to make the most of your fertility. You want to optimize your fertility, your chances of conceiving. These are the times that you are most, you are most fertile and uh, you know, have the highest chances of conceiving if you are trying to conceive. It sounds very simple. Yes, it is as simple as it sounds. This is something that you can do. You don't need a doctor or an expert to do this for you. Just get yourself a thermometer. If you can't get this special, uh, you know, basal body one, then get yourself a regular thermometer, a book and a pen and start charting. That is all you need to do. Take your temperature, monitor your cervical fluid and with that, you can confirm ovulation. And let me say this, sometimes when I, you know, make some videos here, some people expect to do it that one time and get pregnant. It doesn't work like that. If you find an information that is interesting, that can boost your chances of conceiving, it doesn't mean that that first try, it will happen for you. I mean, our bodies are different. So don't think that the first time I do it, I'm going to get pregnant. And if you don't get pregnant in that cycle, you start thinking, maybe I'm not doing it right. Maybe my body is this, maybe something, you know, you know, you don't need that. Continue to do this different cycle. Do it in January. You may get pregnant by June. That is okay. That is okay. You are giving yourself time to learn about your body, to monitor your body, your fertility, and that is fine. So don't expect to get pregnant immediately. I mean, if it happens for you that first time, oh my God, the, the world will be happy for you. I will be very happy for you. But if it doesn't happen, then continue to do it every cycle. Now, I should say this. This can be tedious sometimes. It is not easy to get up and you want you feel like you know using the bathroom, but you can't get up because of all the restrictions. So that's something that you need to be mentally prepared for. Okay, you may, you may not find it enjoyable after doing this like 10 times, 10 days in a row, and yeah, but that's something you want to be mentally prepared for. And you know, just be patient. 
be patient with the process okay basically do not stress your mind about this because stress can affect the accuracy of your results and uh, we don't want that okay with all of that being said there are some things that can affect your results some things can affect your temperature and that will be reflected in the result the first one is alcohol if you, you know, took some wine and you went to bed the next morning when you wake up that can definitely affect your temperature another one is sickness if you had any kind of sickness that you know that caused you to have a fever whether low fever high fever that can definitely affect your temperature and the accuracy of the results if you have if you are experiencing stress high stress low stress that can also affect the accuracy of the results and another one is less sleep if you are not sleeping well that can also be stress you know physical stress on your body and that will also affect the results and lastly everything i talked about before getting up movement you know sitting up talking all of those things can affect your results so you want to be aware of this and you know try your best to do everything to get the most accurate results so yeah guys that will be it for today's video if you find this video helpful with all the tmis i shared with you then give it a massive thumbs up drop any comment down below ask me any questions if you have you can follow me on instagram there's a lot of you who have been asking to have my phone number i am so sorry i can't give out my personal phone number i'm so sorry uh, but you can follow me on instagram i will leave my handle here follow me ask me any question i am always there to answer your questions and subscribe to my channel if you found this video helpful and of course share this video with you know anyone around you that needs to see it i hope it helps them as well thank you guys for always being here i appreciate you all and i will see you in my next one good luck guys Bye -bye.